Can you ready? Is London ready? London's ready. Uh, we can't see you. You can hear me, but you can't see me. No. Ah, ah. I can see you. And now you can. It's very good that everyone is actually talking about sustainability. Loxtan really is leading that cultivation of change. And we're sharing all our knowledge to contribute for a better environment, for a better world. Hello and welcome to L'Occitane UK and Ireland in their flagship store here in London's Regent Street. We are standing face on at a time in history that will fundamentally change how we do business forever. It's the great global alignment, isn't it? It's the togetherness, it's the loss of ego, the willingness to do the right thing for ourselves, for each other and our planet. I'm joined live from the Geneva head office by Adrien Geiger, Group Sustainability Officer for L'Occitane and Group Sustainability Development Director Raphael Archambault. Can you share an overview of L'Occitane's understanding of how to reduce its impact on the planet? We are focusing on three main pillars. First is, uh, of course, around climate. Our aim is uh, for 2025 to really start to be net positive in terms of carbon emission. The second pillar is around biodiversity. We are a natural brand and we want to nurture our main source of raw materials because we have to actually regenerate it. And the third main pillar is regarding our community. We, at the beginning, started to give back to a community of producers we work with in Provence. Now that we're global, we want to give back to a community that we have at a global scale too. I truly believe that businesses and companies can be part, actually, of the solution. That's why our objective is really to find ways to transform and turn consumption into regeneration of our ecosystem. So yes, it's vital for the company and for people. I'm now joined by Millie Lloyd, who is L'Occitane's flagship general manager. Hi, Millie, how are you? Very well. And it's really true, isn't it, that we've all become cultivators of change of what we need to see in the world. So are you able to share some insight into this movement towards a more conscientious shopper? So with L'Occitane, one thing we have done to just help the consumer along the way is introduce a beauty recycling service. And here in the UK, it's available in all of our stores. We've actually managed to recycle over 60,000 units of consumer plastic, which is incredible. And one thing that we are introducing already is a refill fountain concept where you can refill a bottle which is already made from 100% recycled materials. It's 100% recyclable and that's your bottle for life. We work across such a breadth of initiatives from packaging ideas to how we treat our producers and how we treat nature. And what's really inspiring to see is that other brands are now doing the same. And that's brilliant because we're allies in this together. What are L'Occitane doing to ensure your global business are part of the solution to reduce how much we consume? First, we have to reduce. We start uh, producing solid products like solid shampoos that don't have any more plastic packaging. And the aim is by 2025, having all our bottles being 100% recycled. That's our short-term fix, but what would you say is our long-term vision? Our uh, plastic packaging, I want our customer to be able to throw them in the water and so the packaging uh, will feed uh, the fish. You know, it's an easy challenge for my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I love that vision. I love that vision, that whole cycle. We help customers to make change for the long term. So we take time to work on products and services that are really qualitative. So they don't just use it and throw it away and go back to another product, but they use it forever. So like the solid shampoo that we're launching, that is really, they are so qualitative that we hope customers will just change the way uh, they use shampoo. I just used it this morning, look. <laughs> and your hair looks amazing, Adria. Well done, the solid shampoo. How are you getting your customers in store to, to buy less and, and buy responsibly? The waste comes from buying and not using. So what we're doing on the shop floor is telling the story behind those products. You're not just enjoying our iconic and silky and gorgeous shea butter hand cream. You're also helping support women's cooperations, financial emancipation and girls education in Burkina Faso. Once that customer has a real understanding of where that product came from, the impact it's having, 
they're less likely to let it sit on the shelf and let it go to waste. And L'Occitane really is leading that cultivation of change and helping the customer make those little small changes which collectively make a big difference. The word sustainability has suddenly become part of our global vocabulary. But what does sustainability really mean? So when you talk about sustainability, uh, sometimes we talk also about triple bottom line, to create value for the environment, for the society and for shareholders. One of your key pillars are respecting biodiversity. Can you share a little bit more with us about that? There are four or five main reasons why uh, we have this huge loss of biodiversity. Climate change, of course, but also the loss of habitats. Uh, so that's why we're really working uh, on the field with local producers to really try to regenerate biodiversity where we produce our ingredients. We had a key target to protect 1,000 plant species in Provence, but also in every country we operate. And we are so happy uh, and proud because we just reached this target three years before actually the deadline. So, Millie, now in store, there have been multiple forward-thinking initiatives such as Green Day. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? So Green Day is brilliant. We put a spotlight on our eco-refills. And what we've seen is that every year that we've done Green Day, the popularity of eco-refill has grown and grown. And with Green Day, we always partner with local charities that are doing so much to clean up beaches or help introduce new bills into Parliament. What did L'Occitane do for Black Friday? Well, traditionally, Black Friday is a day of mass consumerism, excess, this feeling that we need to buy and we need to buy a lot. Where this year, L'Occitane introduced the concept of Give Back Friday, where a percentage of our sales from one of our most iconic products, the Shea Butter Hand Cream, went towards local projects here in the UK to help plant trees back into our ecosystems responsibly so that we're regenerating the area. The critics could say you're jumping on the bandwagon, that obviously it's become incredibly on vogue for the beauty industry to dial up the sustainability messaging. What would you say if people are saying that this feels like a sort of knee-jerk reaction to suddenly put all of these uh, initiatives into place? First, I believe that it's, it's very good that everyone is actually talking about sustainability today. But for L'Occitane, we are super lucky because we have experience with that. So we have best practices internally. We know how to do things and then we can be even more ambitious in the, in the future objective we have. Are L'Occitane open to sharing your knowledge with an industry that are undergoing monumental change and asking lots and lots of questions? Of course, everything we're doing is open source and we're sharing all our knowledge because we cannot do this by ourselves. We want the other company to contribute to, for a better environment, for a better world. Right now, we are running for B Corp certification. B Corp, it's a movement of inspiring company who wants to have um, a positive impact on the society. So it's really a collaborative approach, engaging suppliers in the sustainability journey to make them progress and go in the same direction as us. How do you ensure that your international vision around sustainability is employed by your local markets. Here again, I think it's really about the engagement of everyone in the company and the fact that every single person in the company can have a huge impact, like the hummingbird you know, story where everyone with a little drop of water can have a huge impact to stop a fire. We are living an amazing period, an amazing moment where everyone, citizen, company, everyone wants to move forward. What can we be doing better? What are you seeing that from a business perspective, there could be areas that maybe need a little bit more focus, that maybe need a little bit more help? What's wonderful about L'Occitane is all of these commitments that we're speaking about today have been core to the brand since the 70s, since we were founded. But with globalization, naturally, some of these commitments can get a little bit lost. So even though we started with glass bottles, as we've expanded, we moved to plastic. And I think something that we can really improve on is going back to our roots by going back to that reducing side of things as opposed to purely recycling. Mm -hmm. So limiting the amount of plastic that we use both in our products but also in our operations. So with store deliveries or when we're doing store refurbishments or new store bills, ensuring that all of those aspects are done in a sustainable way. Every single part of it. Absolutely. 
So thank you to Millie and thank you also to Adrien and Raphael. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Scott. I'm so pleased that your flagship store is now open for business in a very meaningful time where we're witnessing how the progressive citizen is awakening to their vital contribution for change, where they're identifying those brands that are prepared to go that much further, to tell the truth, accept imperfection and adapt to a changing world where people and planet really are our top priority.